All right. We are at five o'clock on the West Coast. So we're going to kick off this show here because I know that uh, Gaetan is uh, is back east. So he's three hours, three at least, um, oh. a later than us. Four hours? Yep. I didn't know. Geez, I didn't know we had that many time zones in Canada. I thought we only did three plus a half, but all right, fair enough. Must be four plus a half. Um, all right, at any rate, let's, uh, let's get this thing going. So welcome, everyone, to the April 6th edition of the Vancouver Power BI and Modern Excel User Group Meetup. Uh, I am uh, super, uh, super excited to have Gaetan with us. Uh, he's going to be talking about Lambdas, which is a technology area of Excel that, quite frankly, I don't understand. So this is going to be a great thing. He's going to help me become a pro, as I see in the title. So it's good stuff here. Um, I do want to show... Uh, throw a big shout out to the sponsors that make all this stuff uh, possible and, and happen here. So Skillwave is our uh, title sponsor. Um, this is the learning platform where Matt Allington and I host all of our material around learning how to use Power Query and Power BI and Power Pivot and all kinds of good Excel stuff and whatnot. So if you are interested in some high quality training around business and uh, business intelligence and, and modeling, you should definitely check us out. Uh, Excel Guru is the parent company of Skillwave, my company, and Monkey Tools is my add-in, which allows you to build better data models faster, leveraging some of the skills and, and things that we actually teach at Skillwave. So um, you should definitely check out Monkey Tools if you haven't seen that before. Uh, our next meetups that we have coming up, uh, we will not be doing a Power BI meetup in the next two weeks. The reason being is there is an MVP summit that is going to be coming up. I am going to be down in Redmond with a few of our Excel folks, including John Peltier that you can see bottom left on screen here. Um, and uh, so for that reason, we're not going to bring anybody on. So our next meetup will be May 4th. John is going to come and talk about us about charting in the age of dynamic arrays. And we will be having a Power BI meetup in May. Um, the feature speaker for that one will be announced in due course. Uh, just a quick note on this, if you or someone else on your team would like to get training in how to use uh, some, you know, basically core knowledge around uh, Excel um, and getting started with Power Query and pivot tables, uh, we have an Excel Fundamentals Bootcamp. Our next semester is kicking off on April 14th. You should definitely check that out uh, if you've got someone on your team or yourself that feels that you could uh, bone up in, in good core skills. In addition to that, we also have our self-service BI Bootcamp where we talk about uh, all kinds of advanced stuff with Power Query, Power Pivot, um, Power BI to build robust self-service solutions. That also kicks off on April 14th. Uh, if you're interested, you should check that out as well. Um, Outside of this, just to let you all know that all of the recordings here are, or all of the uh, meetups that we actually work with here are recorded. Uh, we get all of those posted up online on the Skillwave YouTube channel. So uh, if you are looking for that, the um, information will be uh, coming up uh, shortly afterwards. I usually get that up within 24 to 48 hours of the meetup actually happening. And we post on the uh, meetup channel to let you know that that is, uh, is actually live. Um, Finally, a uh, couple of other quick little things here. If you're interested in bite-sized Excel knowledge, you should check out my Monkey Shorts videos. Uh, we've got a few that we're featuring here for creating disconnected fact tables and making measure folders and Power BI and things like that. Uh, they're always th less than three minutes of technical content, so they're nice, quite bite-sized things. And you can find the full playlist at Monkey Shorts at our Skillwave YouTube channel for the link there. And again, all of these things have already been uploaded to the Meetup site, so you can get access to all of these slides. The last thing that I'm going to say before we uh, throw it over to Gaetan is if you would like to come onto our stage and talk about anything Excel or Power BI or, or anything really that's uh, involved in the Microsoft stack of products that we work with on the Power Platform, we would love to have you. We're always welcoming uh, and interested in welcoming new speakers here. Just fill out the survey and get in touch with us and we will uh, chat with you. We can give you some advice if you're new and uh, get you on our stage and we'd love to have you. And on that note, that is my bit. So Gaetan, I'm going to let you take over the screen here and let's get started with talking about Lambda functions and blowing some minds. Hey, thank you, Ken. So I'm just going to share my screen if you let me. Yep, absolutely. Go for it. Excellent. Can you all see? I can see your screen absolutely perfectly. One thing I forgot to ask you, which I should ask you is now is, how would you like uh, questions to go for everybody here? Um, would you like them to unmute and ask? Would you like to have them in the chat? Would you like me to moderate them in? Are you gonna watch the chat? What's your preferred way to interact with uh, with folks? Chat would be better and we can have some time at the end if we want to have some questions. That will work, there you go, if awesome. You come in the chat. I hope I will be answer, able to answer all of them, but we'll see. There you uh, go. So, uh, welcome everyone. So my name is Gator Moment. Uh, so if you don't understand my French, uh, try to 
uh, visualize uh, a Frenchman with a baguette and a beret, and that should help. Uh, I just wanted to start to say thank you to Ken and Rebecca for organizing this uh, this seminar. And uh, I'm going to uh, start with uh, whoop, a bug, of course, uh, start with functional programming. So functional programming, this is kind of the grandparent of the Lambda. So uh, I found this very interesting quote from uh, from Brian Jones, and, and he was explaining that he went to uh, to Microsoft with a training in functional programming, and he wanted to make Excel um, better at functional programming. So it's a little bit like all of you are using Excel and you probably bring together two functions together, and that's basically a functional programming way of doing it. But it goes much further, and I was really impressed to read a lot about the literature that exists with uh, functional programming. So, uh, example of that will be uh, a mutable state or immutable uh, variables, uh, which kind of thing is very interesting to to think as a as a context. And, and we're going to do a bit of demonstration of that. Uh, and there's proponents of purely functional programming claim that by restricting side effects, programs can have fewer bugs, be easier to debug and test, and be more suited to formal verification. I find this statement extremely interesting for Excel developers and Excel power users, because there's always this little um, tension between the IT people, the pure uh, programmers, uh, and the uh, Excel power users. And in fact, I would claim or argue that at the end of the day, functional programming might be a very interesting bridge between those two groups uh, to show the uh, computer scientists that with Excel, we're basically doing functional programming. And I think this is very important to have this background in mind when you're going to present what you're doing in Excel, especially now that we have the Lambda function and that will create a traceability uh, you'd be able to see the dependency between the different functions and therefore debug them and, and have a more formal verification as, as stated here. So let's uh, let's go back to uh, Descartes. So Descartes was a, a French philosopher, mathematician, and um, he has something interesting that would be very relevant for us, accept nothing as true, divide into simple parts. And I think when we're going to uh, create some lambdas, probably we want to keep this in mind move from simple to complex, also something interesting, and test, 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 test the reason. So even a, a while ago, we're already adding those, those thoughts. So let's do uh, the my first lambda. Uh, it's a very, very classic example. Uh, many websites use that to, to create a first lambda. So I'm going to dive in uh, directly here. So the goal is to have the old values, the new value, and of course we can do uh, equal d6 minus d5 divided by d5. Okay, so let's see if we can do something that will be more generic. When I look at this, I always forget the, which one goes first, if it's the old value, the new value, which one are we divided? So I had to write it down here so I will remember. Now, we can create a growth rate function, and we're going to create that function with a lambda. So let's do it first by using lambda alone. So we start by typing equal lambda. Control shift A is useful. Not that much here. Uh, Control shift A, A for all, will show you all the parameters parameters of a function. So it's it's a nice trick here. Uh, the first parameter will be, uh, let's call it A. I will do second one, which will be B, and I will do A plus B, okay? So it's a super basic lambda function. If I press enter, it returns a calc. Why? Because A and B have not been defined. If I type one, comma, two, and I am very sorry, but in French, we never use the semicolon. We use always the semicolon, so this should work now. Um, oh, my mistake. So I haven't changed for French. I thought I did. OK, so for now, let's replace all the semicolon by a comma on your computer. I'm just going to see if I can quickly. Sorry about that. And I think we are OK here. I've never understood why they put it so far. So that would be here. OK. 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 
and that would be this one that we change for the dot. I change it in Excel as well, but I prefer to have it once for all here. And then should be good. Everything has been changed. OK, so now you know what's going on when you work on the French computer. So this is something important. Now, when we want to do it with this, we're going to uh, use a different formula here and we're going to use the same formula that we typed before. And we can also define in the lambda the name that we want to use. So A and B are not very, very useful uh, or easy to read. So we're going to use instead the old value, the new value, and D6 minus D5 divided by D5. So that will be something like this. So let's see if it's working. So lambda, old value, the new value, so here we have different schools. Uh, we could use new value like this, or we could use a capital letter to separate. I don't have a very strict way of doing it. Uh, I find both are easy to read. And now what is the calculation we want to do? Let's see, old value. So this is very interesting. You see, it already happened, and it's already registered somewhere that I'm using old value. So I just press tabulation, minus the new value. And again, I see it here, divided by the old value, if I'm not making any mistake. Then now I'm going to ch choose which one is which. I can check this. And 0 0.5, sounds good. So minus 0 0.5, I said I wouldn't make a mistake. So it's a uh, new value minus, here we go. Minus the old value. And then we've got the 50%. Okay, perfect. So now we have this lambda which is ready to be used. So how are we going to create that lambda? We're going to copy paste it into a name. So we're going to select and don't forget the equal because if you forget the equal, you're going to have some issues. Control C and I'm going to go into formula. So shortcut for a formula that will be Control F3. Case you don't know, it's very useful. And we're going to use this, and I'm going to create a new name, which I will call gross rate. So again, your choice, uh, small capital letters and everything. If you want to go be closer to the way Excel functions are written, you can use everything in capitals, uh, separate by a dot as well. It seems to be something that Excel is doing a lot. So we could choose gross rate. Uh, so it's, it's really your choice at the end of the day. I think the most important thing is to be consistent when you're doing it so that uh, it will stay the same everywhere. So I'm just going to use this one here uh, and then we'll see different ways of doing it later. Then I paste, okay. So now I'm pasting the Lambda that I created, I'm pasting it here, press okay, and then I close. Now I should be able to use it. So if I type equal L, I see my list of lambda that I have. So you see, I choose to have a separator, uh, which is uh, the underscore. I'm going to choose the gross rate, and I'm going to take the old value, the new value, I'm going to make that mistake at least five times, and I'm done. Okay, 550%, still working fine. Okay, so sounds really good. Now, when you create a function, and you remember what uh, Descartes says, test the reasons. So let's test if it's working fine. For example, if I put a zero here, that's fine. We have my check. I'm not sure why. Let's so be sure here. Zero minus hundred percent. Okay. Now zero one hundred. We've got uh, div zero division by zero. We cannot do that. So we should be able to manage that error. And this is something that is very important when you create and write your own Lambda function is how can I manage the errors? Um, unfortunately, most of us are lazy and so we kind of take a, a shortcut, but really if we are able to do it, I think it will make the code extremely robust and not prone to this type of mistake. So as much as possible, try to do this. And of course, uh, it means that you're going to try to spend some time to do it, but at the same time, you're going to reduce uh, future technical debt. So uh, let's have this one here and we want to manage it. So how can we manage this? I will go back to the Lambda and I could use the if error. 
So something like this. If error, this thing. Then in that case, I'm going to use uh, impossible division by zero. And let's see if this is working fine. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Should be better. Okay. So, and this is something tricky with the lambda. It's going to add a multiplication sign at the end. So, if you got a calc, check the end. Let me redo what I've done. So this is a very good example of a classic error. So I have two parentheses and I didn't add the parentheses here because I made a, a small mistake at the beginning here. So this one will not work. But if I remove this and I make a mistake, like I forget a parenthesis. So for example, this one, the suggestion that I got earlier was to add the parentheses, but also to multiply by this. And this is the error that created. So be very careful when you're using Lambda. It may add some uh, multiply, multiplication sign at the end because it will be its way to correct. So that, here we go again. So it added the multiplication sign, this one. So I'm just going to finish this. Uh, now I have impossible division by zero. And you see how I'm testing all the time. So of course I'm live, so I cannot go back and edit the video, but that's okay. I'm going to continue like this. So I'm going to copy this again, go back into uh, this uh, name manager, and I'm going to simply edit it. Control V, close. So make sure that's working, perfect. Now, one of the great thing about the lambdas is that the entire worksheet will be changed at once. So you don't have to come back to any uh, formula that you created, everything will be changed at once. So for example, uh, so that's, that's something very interesting. I'm going to give you an example of that in a, in a minute. So, okay, for everyone, this is how we're going to create a lambda. We do it this way. Now, one thing that we can do as well is to comment uh, the, the lambda. So I'm going to go back again, Control F3, and going to edit this and add here a comment. So the comment here, usually I'm going to uh, use the old values, a new value, or anything that I enter here so that I can describe it. So old value, this is the old value. This one is pretty straightforward, but in some more complex uh, and uh, let's go back again. OK, and I close. Now, if I type equal L rows, I can see automatically the uh, command that I created, which will be very useful. I hope uh, then, then here we have it as well. And I'm not sure if we can see it. I think it's something tricky where you have to erase the last letter to see it again. Here I can still see it and then I remove, but at least I have this. Control Shift A does not work on that. It seems, let me try again this. Oh, oh, nope, okay. But at least we know the name of the variable, which is very useful. And so we can continue based on that. Uh, again, I'm going to take this this finish the demonstration of that impossible division by zero perfect let's say i made a small typo in the uh, name in the message so i can also edit this now one shortcut here which is very very interesting is the shortcut f2 so this one very very interesting why because whenever you edit uh, something like this if i navigate, then it's going to add the uh, reference. So I press escape. In order to avoid that, I'm going to press F2 here. And now I can navigate and I'm inside the formula. If I press F2 again, I go back to the state where it's going to create and add this thing inside. So this is true for uh, editing a name. It's true for data validation. I think it's true as well for uh, conditional formatting. OK, so I can change this division by, and let's say we speak French, uh, division par zero. Oh, I forget my F2. OK, now I press F2, I can navigate inside, par zero. So this will be in French, what we'll write. 
closed. And the great thing is you see here it has been changed, it has been changed. This is my original Lambda. And so compared to the old programming way uh, of having a different function that are similar and we have to correct all of them if we make a mistake, here we change them once and everywhere in the worksheet, in the workbook, uh, all the function will be changed. So you see it's very powerful and like anything powerful, you have to manage it with uh, big responsibility, of course, because if you change a lambda, which is used somewhere else, you have to remember that there are some dependencies that need to be uh, managed as well. So something important. Okay, good. So the uh, question that we started to discuss, uh, which was how should we name the lambda? Uh, I was reading a really good book on. Uh, it's called. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. This book. It's an old book on VBA programming, uh, but mm. it's one of the best I ever read, and I'm still not <laughs> completely done. It was written, I think, in 2009. And they were saying that for naming user-defined function, like what we have in VBA, we want to use uh, names that are similar to uh, uh, the, uh, the Excel names. So it's always a good idea to see if we could see what will be the, the, the convention naming, nomenclature in French, uh, the convention naming for the name in, in, uh, in Excel. And sometimes we can start to guess like text after, text before, text join. So this kind of makes sense. Uh, but sometimes it's more difficult, like those if are OK. Uh, in English, you're very lucky because you have VLOOKUP, you have VLOOKUP, then you have XLOOKUP, and in French, we have recherche X, recherche V. So it's like the V is at the end, while the V is at the beginning here. Um, this is two uh, interesting uh, function in French. And here we have if NA, which is great, and if error as well. So you see that the, the convention naming may not be completely the same everywhere. So depending on your own naming convention, you should be uh, able to manage that. So if you have any thoughts on how do you name your lambda, uh, please let me know in the in the chat. That would be interesting to see uh, what are the different conventions you you started to to uh, implement. Personally, I use L underscore. So the underscore is one of the first. I'm not sure if it's the first one, but it's one of the first characters you see at the top of the list. So by doing L underscore, I'm sure to see all my lambda function one after the other. So that's my personal way of naming, and then. Depending on, on the case, uh, I will try to respect something. It also depends on the complexity of the uh, the application you are developing. OK. Look at different uh, example of uh, Lambda. And here I want to uh, show you something which is related to the idea of what I'm going to input in the function. Is it something that is immutable or is it something that is mutable? If I go back here, you remember we say here that um, it's the idea of mutable state. Uh, the thing is, in Excel, uh, that could be a problem. So let me give you an example. We have uh, a lambda that's going to return the name of uh, the uh, the name of the the, uh, the worksheet. Sorry. So uh, that will be something where we're going to use not this one, but I, if I remember well, this should be fine name, not this one, to address this issue later on. Okay, so this is the, uh, I think it's the old way of doing it. Uh, there is a faster way of doing it using tech, tech split cell. Uh, at the end of the day, it's pretty much the same. We're looking for what is just after the dash because in here, you see that the dash, the, the square bracket, and this is the beginning of the worksheet name. So we want to find where is this thing and return everything to the right. So that's the idea of this, this uh, formula. So we do a split cell uh, based on this one, and then uh, we're going to take the last one, which is the minus one that we see at the end edit this here that would be easier so we have minus one here and we have the take here so we want to take the last one of the text split 
so you probably are aware that there is a new um, new information in Excel, which is going to bring the value of it. If you don't know it, you can still use the function key F9 that will calculate. So F9 here, that will calculate what we have here. Uh, we should have two value inside. So we have the first value in this array and then the second value in this array of string, in fact. And that will be the worksheet name that we have here, uh, which is the name that I have here in this one here. So that worksheet name here is the name of the worksheet. Uh, why do I use that? Because then I don't have to type uh, anything here. I can just use directly the worksheet name, which is going to what I'm going to do later. OK, so I have a formula that is working. I'm going to transform it into a lambda. How am I doing this? So I'm going to copy again. So I'm going to create a lambda where I take all of this. And here I don't add anything, and I'm, I'm going to see if it's working. So it seems to be working fine. OK, interesting. And now if I, if I input A1 here, so A1 will be used here. We've got C, C, and C stand for the first parameter of the lambda function, which will take the value of A1, if you remember what we've done just before. And this is the parameter that we're going to pass into the cell and the reference that we have here. So we pass this reference here. Now, interestingly enough, if we don't pass anything, it's working as well. The problem that we have, though, is that uh, one of them is not going to work correctly. So let me just quickly show you that this one here. I'm just going to replace that. Okay. So one is working correctly in this specific case, but if I type this one, which we'll see, I type here, I still refer to worksheet name. It's one of the worst case scenario. While if I use uh, the worksheet name A1, I'm going to return the correct name of the worksheet. So what's going on here? The, if we look at the name manager, the name which is here, we have the C which is defined, while in this one I don't define the C and I'm trying to get the lambda to work without any parameter because I use A1 directly. And that was a mistake I made when I created it. So if I go back here and I go in name manager, I have name wrong here because I'm referring to this one here, this one. So this parameter is a mutable variable in the sense that if I run this function somewhere in the file, it's going to change because it's part of the property of a name that if I refer to this, it's going to change. And in fact, you see it's worksheet name A8. If I go here and I go back to the name manager and I look at this function, it refers to worksheet name uh, B12. So it will stay there. And in that sense, I'm losing the information of the worksheet name, which my goal was to bring the worksheet name here. But I still refer to the worksheet name that was st uh, stated here. OK, so uh, I hope I was clear on that. So be very careful about testing. OK, will it work if I use the function somewhere else? Now, if your goal was to always bring the name of this specific worksheet, then it's working. But if your goal is to take the name of the active worksheet, this is not working. OK, so why did I use this? Because then now I can use the L worksheet name in my title. That's right here. And it's there everywhere. So if I go here, I will have my first lambda. And they are always using the same name. Therefore, what we can do is to change something here. And we can uh, uh, use the worksheet name, which is working, obviously, and add something to it. So I could use it something like uh, this is. I've not done it, so we'll see if it's working. And now I have this is Q, how, et cetera. This one, I don't think there is any name because that was my first one, but the rest there will be name and all the name in all the worksheet will be changed. So you see the power of a Lambda when we use it, it's going to be applied everywhere. So just uh, a very powerful way of doing it. So I'm just going to remove that to something clear. If you have any question, don't hesitate in the in the chat. 
Um, so we talk about worksheet names. Now, let and lambda. So let and lambda, they are like the, the twin sisters. Um, I usually don't write with a lambda first, I write with a let, and then at the end I will take my let and put it into a lambda. So when we write a let, uh, it's almost the same as a lambda. It starts with a name and then the value of the name and then another name or calculation and etc. So let's do a quick example on that. So let's, I like this notation. I, I learned it uh, today, so I'm not completely used to it, but it's interesting to always start with this, uh, this one. So same example, similar. So A plus B like this. So I always forget this one. Here we go. Now, I think, yeah. Would we be able to increase the font size a little bit? Like this? Beautiful, Beautiful. Thank, you. thank you. Yeah, thanks for letting me know. So one thing we can do is to add the uh, space here to have a nice, uh, easy to read uh, formula. There are other tools that exist in the advanced uh, formula environment. I will show it uh, probably at the end very quickly. At least you know it's there, uh, but let's let's continue with this. So, so we go there. Uh, so we've got the, the answer here. Now, an interesting thing we can do as well is to use B3, comma, A plus B, comma, underscore, and then we're going to, uh, let's use C instead of B3, and that will be easier to read. And C will be my result. So I can use this and it will still work. Now, if I'm debugging the uh, let, and we're going to do another example later on, but I can use also A here and it will return Y, one, because one is the value of A. If I re return the final thing here as being A, I'm going to return this one. So if you have worked a little bit with Lambda and also with um, uh, let, uh, you know one of the difficulties is that if I press F9 here, it's going to return a name. Why a name? Because those are names that are not uh, calculated within the let. And then there's the same problem. So in order to avoid that, what we're going to do is to uh, add here, the way I'm going to write it is to write again the result at the end. And then I can double check what I want to check. So if I want to check A plus B or B, I can use this and paste it here. And now I have the result of B, which is really cool from that perspective. Okay, so Alt Enter, if you want to enter some uh, new lines inside your formula space to add this. The advanced formula environment, uh, place the result as a, as a variable at the end of the formula. And then now we can create uh, a lambda based on that. So when you create a lambda, you can create the lambda and then uh, you write the parameters of the lambda, so A, B, and then you can start a let and reuse inside the let the A and B. So let's say C, uh, here you want to define them, comma one, comma, and then A plus B plus C, okay? So this will be uh, the value of C will be one, then I'm going to combine those three. And if I'm not making a mistake, I close this and I'm going to add two and three. And return six, three plus two plus one. Okay, so we see here that we can embed within a lambda a let. And this is very useful for many things when you need to use different results. So something very important to keep in mind, let and lambda are like really sisters. And uh, I, when I started, I almost wrote uh, an add-in to transform a, a let into a lambda, then I, I, <laughs> I gave up because that was a bit too complex. But, but this is something I was using so much let to then transform it into lambda later on that it's something to keep in mind. So the big difference is the parameter here, A, is defined at the end with the bracket when we want to test it. When we create the lambda itself, we don't take the last two, uh, the, this last uh, brackets. We only text, text what is here. Don't forget to take the equal at the beginning. It's also a beginner mistake that uh, is very easy to make. Okay, so um, let's do a, a little bit more about uh, more advanced lambda. So I have uh, 
something which is a little bit more complex here, so I'm not going to type it because we're already going to finish at uh, <laughs> quite late. But it's a it's a let that will compare to a range. So I started with a let to train and see if I could get to uh, something interesting. Uh, there's still some French. Okunero uh, means no mistakes, and then here possible error, uh, possible errors in. Uh, in Canada, so you can speak French and English, isn't it? Uh, and so it's going to say, okay, we, you have a possible mistake in uh, D7. So D7, uh, yes, and also in uh, C8, yes, as well, because we've got this. And then if I type another typo here, T Y, then it's going to add it here. So it's an example of a relatively powerful function to very quickly compare uh, to range. Um, then I was like, okay, we can probably improve that because really we want to compare this with a range that has the same dimension. So I started to use the offset so that the uh, plage two, which is range two, will now be defined based on a top cell uh, range. Okay. Then once we have this, then we can start to create the uh, lambda. So how am I going to create the lambda based on that? Uh, so I'm going to use this one. I'm going to uh, copy it first. So I have something working. I'm going to increase that so hopefully everybody can see. So uh, let me go here. So let's see if I can transform that into a lambda. So as I was mentioning, anything that is a parameter that we want to take into consideration as an input, we're going to put it at the end. So control C, I'll bring it at the end here, control V, and this one will be just before right here. So that's my two parameters that I want at the end, like so. Because I put them at the end, I don't need this anymore. I don't need this anymore. Okay. Now, this is where I'm going to add the let, and I'm going to replace the lambda, and I'm going to add a final parenthesis uh, that will be at the end of the let, which is here and here. This should bring me exactly the same syntax. It's working. Uh, I'm really surprised I succeeded the first time. So we have the lambda, first parameters, which will be tableau 4, second parameters, which will be G6, and the let here, Control Alt Enter. That's the let we had previously, which finished right here. You see that I will have the result, which is here and plus two. So this is a good way to separate, I believe. It was already done. Uh, you can do that as well. And so that's easier to read. And this is what I need to take. So press Enter. It's working fine. Now I'm going to take from the last parenthesis of the lambda to here. As Escape, going back to name manager, new name. I'm going to name it L, compare to range. Uh, and then I'm going to copy paste like so. Press OK. So I have my new thing here. OK. If I had a little bit more time, I will write a really nice and and let's see if it's working. Perfect. So now I have a really nice lambda that I can use to compare two range very quickly. So pretty cool. Now, one of the things that happen is uh, some of you are working with previous version on Excel and you're like, oh my God, why do I not have the last version? OK, uh, Win Hopkins just blew my mind a, a couple of years ago when he showed me something very cool. Uh, if you, let's let's go back to the let function we have here. Control C, escape. I hope it will work in English. It works in French. I'll go to File, Option. So this is if you don't have um, uh, if you don't have uh, Lambda yet, but you want to do something very close. You go in the autocorrect option, and mine is F Comp for F Compare, and I want to replace that by all this. Press OK, OK, F Comp Space. And then I have my lamb my uh, function, which is almost good. Here, I just need to remove this thing. So I'm going to do it again. Just remove this one. I'm not sure if I have one here. Let's see. I don't have one here, so that should work. Escape, file, options. In option, I go to proofing, autocorrect options, fcomp. 
and I'm going to modify this. Triple click, press replace. Yes, OK, OK, OK. Let's see if it's working. FCOMP space. I think you have to be on the second one. Here we go. Oh, OK, so it's not working here. I, I believe there is also a limitation in terms of, of uh, number of characters. But if your Lambda is uh, short enough, this is a great way to, uh, to replace it. Uh, might be something else because I'm pretty sure in French it was working. So that's something I will have to check. Uh, I will come back to you with the, the good one. It could be related to the fact that I use uh, a slightly longer version of it. Let me just finish this. If I don't find it, I will just move on to the next topic. But at least you have seen it at least three way, three times how we do that. OK, OK. OK, now it's working perfect. So table four, press enter, you're good. And of course, here the great thing is you can select something else to uh, just check those two. So if you don't have a lambda, you can still store entire formulas uh, right here and then uh, call them uh, on demand. And then when you switch to lambda, then you can at least use them. So it's not the full lambda way of doing it, but at least you can store your formula this way because lambda is a great way to store formulas. OK. Lambda within lambda. So this is something I learned uh, relatively recently. Um, it's pretty amazing because you can uh, use a lambda within a lambda. So something like this. Uh, I'll start with a let. I'll start with a string and I'm going to be more explicit, so string. And this string will be A, B, C, D. OK, and here I want to uh, replace several times something. So I'm going to have. I'm going to have no semicolon and I'm going to go with uh, substitute. The string. The old text, let's say I want to replace a by one. And I'm going to substitute as well within that. I'm going to add another substitute. So there are better ways to do that, of course. And I want to substitute D by four. Working fine, interesting. So this is converted, I think, as well. So yeah, Tom, can you yes. can you zoom in on that one again for us? Sorry, thank you for beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So what we have here is we're going to have the string. We go through, we replace the A by one. So I can remove the bracket and then we replace the D by four. Perfect. Now, let's say you want to replace the A and the D all by number one or number nine or whatever. So you could replace by nine here and by nine here. And you have to do that a lot of time. So you can create a lambda within a let or within a lambda as well. Um, and we're going to do it this way. Here I'm going to create a function that will be a lambda that will use the uh, function substitute. So I'm going to have here um, the string and the nine will be always there. Uh, so I'm going to use the second string. So I could use, um, bring this one here to text. So we've got text, old text. So this will be text, old text. And I'm going to replace by nine. OK. Now, uh, S is now this lambda. I'm going to remove this and replace it by this. So if I press enter, great, still working. Now what I want to do is to have S instead of the substitute, S instead of the substitute, and I'm going to remove those two because cool. And then in that case, I'm going to substitute here the text by uh, the old text and here nine. Okay, so I have my lambda here which should return a substitute of the text that will be entered here, of the whole text here. So in that case, when I'm going to use the S here, should be string this one. 
which is defined as ABCD, sorry, and then this one. So let's see if this is still working, and it's still working. Now, if I want to add one more, S, and then I press C, and I press this one. So now it's going to replace. So it's a, it's kind of a, not a stupid example. It was used uh, in, a, in a challenge uh, on LinkedIn. But this is a way to use a Lambda within uh, a let or even within uh, another Lambda. So if you have a pretty complex formula uh, that you can, and then it makes sense to create a function for that, you can create it within the let instead of creating it uh, outside of uh, the um, of the lambda. Of course, here we can also create this lambda outside. So I can take this one too. I hope I'm not going to lose you. So I hope everything is fine up to here. Now I'm going to create that lambda directly as a name. So I'm just going to test it first. It's always a good idea. So I'm going to test that and it should replace ABC comma, I want the A being replaced by a nine. So I now have nine BC. So this is working fine. Perfect. So now I'm going to take this. Control C, escape, going to the name manager, new name, L underscore. I will take it substitute nine. And I'm going to now bring the information here. So paste the lambda, press OK, I close, equal L, substitute 9. I'm going to test one more time just to be sure. 9BC, perfect. Now I can use that within, of course, here, and I can replace the SSS again. So I'm not going to do it, but I think you understand the, the idea. OK, so you can really create uh, multiple lambda and then reuse it. OK, here's substitution. It will replace uh, this one by nine, whatever we choose here. OK, so um, if we go one step further, and, and this is uh, kind of all the rage uh, right now, because with lambda, once you understand the idea of lambda, uh, we have the lambda helper functions. They are pretty amazing functions. Um, they are kind of um, in, in some ways I give this is really where we can see the power of lambda because uh, before that okay we can create our own function but then it's kind of cumbersome and then to use the recursivity was a bit difficult but now we have this and it's going to be extremely useful to uh, loop through different value of a rows of a colon and etc so uh, here I'm just going to demonstrate with the by call, but I strongly encourage you to look at different challenges that have been uh, raising up uh, over the, uh, the LinkedIn and see how they solve a very complex problem with this. Uh, the great thing is you can really embed them and, and complete them. OK, so this will be a, a bit of a, a more advanced example. So this is a correlation. So you've got the correlation here. I want to calculate the correlation between uh, two columns. So I'm going to increase again. Okay. So this is a correlation between those two. And the goal is to loop through all the columns. Okay. And then calculate those correlation. So for that, we're going to use something that will look like this. Uh, formula. So I'm just going to take this one first and see how it works, and then after we're going to do the rest. So Control C, Escape, going here. So equal. By call, I start with the array I want to select. So that's the array that we have here. So it's going to go colon by colon and do some calculation. The lambda will have one parameter, which is the colon I'm using. OK, so if I were to remove that, control X, P, underscore P, and I let it go. Uh, okay. Well, let's not do that because I need the lambda as well. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, bring it back. That would be easier. Uh, and so let me explain this. So the P will be the first column, and then this one will be an offset of the P 
zero row down, one column to the right. So it basically takes this column, this column calculates the correlation, then takes this column, this column calculates the correlation, and so forth. And then we have our correlation, which is calculated until the end. OK, so pretty cool. Now, what we have is here we have an issue because uh, this is the last column, so we can use the function, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in English it's drop. And what do I want to drop? Do I want to drop, classic mistake, the first row uh, or the last row? No, I want to drop the last column, so minus one. And if I put my comma, that will be easier. So I'm just going to do it here. So a drop, and I'm going to add here, comma, comma, minus one. Okay, when I do that, it's going to drop the last cell, or the last column of my range, and therefore I don't calculate this one because it's kind of pointless. Okay, now, where it starts to be really interesting, and then uh, I think it was Owen Price that showed that technique, is that you can take the lambda and now uh, create a lambda of the by call. So if I go in the name manager in LCOF, if you see here, I have the exact same uh, thing that I had for the LCOF core to columns. So which means you can simplify the way the uh, formula is written by using uh, this one directly. So the way to do it is to, of course, take uh, the information that we had here, sorry, the, uh, the lambda that we had here, and bring this up to the name manager so that we can use that later on. You see here, I don't have any um, specification. It's really just write this. And the key thing as well is to have no parentheses here. So you see, I don't have any parentheses because the structure of the lambda that is um, uh, that that the by colon is waiting for is already the structure I chose in the way I define the lambda. So I could use that directly. So I press Control C Escape, press this, and then I use a lambda inside the by colon. And so I found it very interesting because it's kind of looping back to what the lambda was originally and bringing it into uh, the bicolon. Okay, so so this is an example of bicolon. I strongly encourage you to to look at them. Uh, what are your favorites? Uh, you can answer in the in the chat. The as far as I'm concerned, I really love those uh, map by row by colon. Reduce is interesting because you can also use reduce not with just numbers, but you can also use it with text, text or strings. Um, make array is nice because we, we think in rows and columns constantly when we use Excel, so it's also something interesting. Scan, I never really used it. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, uh, to, to learn, uh, I've used it, but for in real case, not, not really. So, so that's something we, which would be interesting. The is omitted is also something that is part of how do you make my Lambda function uh, work better? Uh, so, and it's part of the different tests you can embed into uh, your Lambda function. So, is omitted is, uh, this is the example from the help, where we're going to say we want a lambda x, y, and if is omitted y, then we're going to say missing second argument. So it's kind of used as a test. It could also you be used as a default value. So for example, uh, if it's missing, I could say that the y will be equal to zero. And if it's not missing, then it would be X plus Y. So I could ignore it. So there are different ways to do that. A little bit like when you do um, the X lookup, there are different uh, arguments which are kind of could be omitted. So if it's omitted, then we do something or we do something else, which is the default. Uh, and then if not, then of course we, we act up accordingly. So it's kind of reproducing something similar. You can also use different uh, function of information uh, that we have and also capturing different uh, errors. So I just wanted to uh, show some of them. Maybe I'm missing a couple. Uh, if error, if NA, is NA, uh, is error, 
either his number, his text, or all those are information functions. They're going to return a true false, uh, while those are also going to um, uh, use the information of C4 and then return a, a, the error that you want to return. If there is no error, they're going to return C4 in that case. Okay, so different example here of what is going on. Uh, they work as well on uh, ranges. So you see here that different ranges uh, right there, as well as here we're going to return a range. And within that range, you're going to be able to capture the uh, NA, which is here. So you hopefully you have uh, you know what is a dynamic array and then how they can uh, be spilled uh, spilled array. So uh, this is part of the thing we can also manage with the if error. Uh, Owen Price was calling for uh, the introduction of a function that will be if omitted. Uh, that could be very useful when we build our data, our um, our function so that this will simplify the if is omitted by if is if omitted directly. The same way as the uh, if ena was very useful uh, instead of having if is ena blah blah blah. Okay. A um, few more things. Uh, when you uh, create your lambda, uh, one thing I'm trying to do, I'm not good enough at that, but I'm trying to do is to have uh, my lambda into one table. Why is it interesting? The thing is, um, you, you can copy one worksheet to another um, workbook and then all the lambda will be copied but I, I like the idea of being able to take this where I have the name of the lambda the documentation for each of the lambda and I'm when I'm going to take this I'm going to create a new one control n blank workbook so right now control f3 there is no name if I paste And I come back, Control F3. Now my two names have been loaded within the new workbook. So you see, if you maintain and you're very rigorous in maintaining uh, your list of uh, lambdas, then you can very quickly copy paste them directly there. So this is a, a very interesting way of of uh, managing your lambda. And I. This one, unfortunately, I think will not work directly. So control F3. Oh, yes, it worked. So OK, it's great. So it's as soon as we make a reference to the to the name, it's working. Uh, yeah. Good. So this is something interesting. Um, keep in mind, so copy the table of Lambda. Replace a string with control H in a complex formula. So if I have uh, 12 plus 15 plus 12. I want to replace my 12 here, but not in the entire uh, workbook. I can select two cells and then I replace within those two cells. So if I click here, find all, it's going to find all within the selection. And so I will not look through the entire workbook, which is really interesting. So this is something useful when you need to replace a name everywhere within a Lambda. Uh, think about selecting two uh, cells and then you use the control H. Those we talk about, Windows V to have access to everything we uh, copied, very, very useful. If you have not activated that into uh, the, the clipboard, I really recommend you. It's, uh, it's really saving time. Keeping in mind, uh, the complexity of dependency can be difficult to manage. So when you create those lambda, be very, very rigorous. Um, try to read about what is a pure function. Uh, there is a lot of literature in functional programming regarding pure functions. So if you have some, uh, start with the Wikipedia page and then expand, uh, but uh, functional programming is something that has been uh, going on for decades, I believe. Uh, and so it's there are a lot of literature on that. The advanced formula uh, environment is also of great help uh, to to do uh, to manage your lambda. I'm going to run it maybe at the end because last time I ran it, it crashed my system. So there is still some improvement there to to be done. But this is also a great way to manage your lambda. Um, earlier today, I had one more lambda that I needed to walk through, and I, I use it on. Uh, a program where we manage stocks. Um, those have been created on two different versions of Excel, and you see that this one is returning 
Let me just zoom a little bit more. So they look like almost exactly the same, but this one is in uh, French, no English, and this one is in French. And so if I'm looking for C10 exchange abbreviation, it doesn't work. But if I look for the French version of uh, the abbreviation, it will work. So I created a lambda that will look and see which one is returning an error and see if I can get finally the right um, uh, English exchange abbreviation plus uh, the ticker. So this way I was able to manage that. So I think we're reaching the end of, uh, of this. Uh, recursive Lambda is a huge uh, topic. It will take one more hour minimum to do it. I gave you a few links around that. I played with it with the Levenstein distance. So it's something you can do with a Lambda, recursive Lambda. Um, another good topic is who has used it? who know what it is and is still using it, and who has completely forget about it and is using the helper function. That would be a good uh, good question for you. Uh, and I'd like to conclude and, uh, and thank Ken for this, uh, this presentation uh, and the opportunity to present, in fact. Um, and I will uh, let uh, the file uh, available for everyone if, uh, if some of you want to access it. So thank you very much. And then uh, I'm open to question. Uh, I don't know if we have a lot of time, Ken. I don't know how you do that at the end. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, thank, yeah, no, thank, thank you for, thank doing, for this. doing this. We get a funky echo. Uh, um, the there's no questions in the chat uh, per se. Um, Davish has made some comments just on the uh, the naming uh, nomenclature that uh, that they use for uh, for their stuff as well. But um, I am curious if you want to show the advanced formula environment if you're willing to risk crashing your cell right now and um, try to, to show that one off. <laughs> Let's see. I don't like that. <laughs> no, it's it's never good when it when it does that in the middle of your demo, is it? So my wife. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's going back. I don't know why it crashed several times. Um, yeah, <laughs> I I can't even hazard a guess. Uh, that's we we still have to manage that. I didn't see that inside of version for Excel. So, but. Yes, the the advanced formula is used uh, by by many advanced users of Excel uh, and Lambda. So I think it's really something you should explore if you want to be sure, serious about it. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, let's see if I can try one more time. Here we go. Now, if I start to create those, um, so I haven't used it a lot because uh, most of my formula were not long enough that we will require to go into this, but it should be able to uh, save uh, the Lambda you're going to create. Then you can retrieve them from the name manager. Uh, and it's also a very nice presentation. I will try. Uh, and that's a super simple one. Okay. Plus B would be better. Go in the manager. Oh, that doesn't look positive. No. <laughs> oh, you know, should ask those damn NVP to ask uh, Microsoft to solve that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, close. So it should be here now. I'm able to access it, so I have it here. So I should be able to uh, change some stuff in it. Uh, time two, let's say. Now I change it, I save, go back to name manager, and it has been saved here. There you go. Cool. The, the the trick the trick is like it's like in the old version of Excel. Uh, don't forget to save. <laughs> yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, and I have seen a video from when Price where he was able to connect uh, his GitHub account. Uh, I've not been able to take the time to, to reproduce it, but he was able to connect his GitHub account to retrieve directly from the internet the lambdas. So there are ways to go really far uh, by using the, the name manager, the advanced formula environment when, when, when it's working. 
Yeah, if uh, for for those folks who haven't seen this before, this is a, an add-in um, that uh, that you can get installed into Excel uh, through the um, through the add-in store that they have there, and it's uh, it's relatively new. It's something that was developed by Microsoft Research, and I think is something that, uh, from what I understand, they're still working on as as well um, in order to uh, to get this better and, and build up a, a better environment for actually doing some of this complex work because. That name manager one single line is really hard to try and write and debug formulas in. So, yeah, that, that's one of the reasons I, I always always start with a let, and then I yep. start and then I implement gradually, and then I yeah I transform and, and concatenate everything into a lambda. This makes sense. Now, see, I now I actually have to try that. That. Uh... I appreciate the tip on uh, on that. I haven't had a lot of work with this let functions I write all the time, but lambdas have all sort of just kind of hurt my head a little bit. So um, there you go. Uh, so are there any, if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to uh, to throw them into the uh, chat and we can uh, can throw them to uh, Gaetan before uh, we wrap up for the evening. Or if anybody has any just like comments that they want to leave, that's cool too. Um, Gaetan, I want to thank you for uh, for doing this. I mean, it's, uh, it's interesting to look at it um, from a much slower uh, sort of perspective, I guess, from, from building up into it, not slow, because you covered a heck of a lot in uh, in an hour. But um, but I, I know for myself personally, I mean, like every time I try and come to a new technology, I always want to do something that is not not A plus B. I'm always like going right off in the deep end. And this is one of those ones that, that really did stump me. So I, uh, I appreciate your ability to sort of start at the beginning and, and walk through that. Um, you know, along the way, and uh, and I look forward to sitting back and watching the video uh, back from this one. I'll slow it down a little bit to try and really sort of digest it and uh, and get into it. But um, if if you want to have fun and and do one of those complex ones, I encourage you to do the Levenstein distance. It's relatively easy to understand. It's it's I believe it's what is used in Power Query when they do fuzzy matching. You know, okay. they try to to catch. Uh, okay, is this address the same as this one? Yeah. Uh, when I was used, uh, when I was working as a database analyst, we were using those approach all the time because we don't want to send two letters to the same person. Uh, we don't send the letters anymore, but at that time that was important. So, so it's something you can do. So, so this type of formula is something you can do as a lambda, and then you've got the Levenstein, and this one was recursive. It's it's a real challenge to to get to it. Yeah, I think I might start a little simpler than that one to begin with. <laughs> you <laughs> but appreciate it. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Maybe a year from now I'll be building Mandelbrock plots, but I, I don't. I don't anticipate that. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> There you go. Um, awesome. Well, listen, I don't see any other questions coming in uh, on the chat on this one. So um, once again, I just want to thank you for coming and doing this and uh, and exposing people to uh, to what's actually happening here. Um, I will get the uh, video for this uh, produced within the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. So for anybody that uh, does want to watch this back and take it uh, take it slow and, and whatnot, uh, we will definitely be doing that. Uh, Paul is asking, what was the book that you had that you're, uh, you're looking at there? So that is... Uh, is that professional Excel development? All right, professional Excel there you development. Go. Uh, Rob Bovey, Denis Valentin, Stephen Bullen, John Green. It's yeah. an old book, but I found it's full of super interesting stuff. It, it definitely is. I see the comment from Davisha going, "That's old." It is, but it's still good. Like, there's a lot of good, great stuff in there, and uh, yeah. that was that was the second edition because Dennis was yes. uh, was got involved with the second edition. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and Davisha says that book scared the hell out of her. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's deep. There's lots of good stuff in there for sure. But um, but definitely, if you're looking at building uh, professional applications in Excel, it is uh, it is. I've still got it on my shelf and and uh, look at it from time to time as well. Um, so yeah, great book. I mean, um, they, they start the book by saying this book is on top of you start to read this book once you're done with uh, the super formulas and all the big book of what can bar. Absolutely. And I mean, the, the good news is even if you don't read it all, it will hold down your desk so it will never blow away. Right. It is a it is a thick resource, that one for sure. So <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, listen, folks, um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to shut this one down for tonight. And uh, as I say, I'll get that recording up in the next 24 to 48. I know uh, Guy Tan is going to send us the uh, workbook with all the, the examples and links in there. We'll get that posted up on the meetup site as well so that people can get access to it. Uh, and don't forget that the uh, the next meetups are open for RSVPs uh, or these John's is anyway. Um, so don't forget to sign up for that and we will uh, we will see you soon. Winston, you have your hand raised. Do you have a question before we go? I don't know if that's a yes or a no.
Oh, he's clapping. Okay, there you go. He's he's got the. There you go. Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. There you go. What a great way to sign off. Thank you very much again, Gaetan. We will catch you all later. Thank you. Bye bye.